Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name's Natalie and today I'm going to show you how I prep my veggie beds after I grow a hungry crop like cauliflowers. First off, I don't like to pull them out. I like to leave them in the ground and cut them off a little bit lower because the roots stay in the ground and they'll break down creating little channels, little pathways for water to get in and to allow all that organic matter to stay in the soil rather than just chuck it or compost it. So I'm going to go do that now. I'm going to grab my secateurs and cut these off a little bit lower. I like to practice no dig gardening on my farm and the reason I like to do that is because if you dig a garden and you turn it over and you're constantly tilling it you kill your microbes and you harm your earthworms and I've got a lot of worms in my garden but this is a very compacted bed it is I believe it's imported um, red clay while I say that it's because I don't have any red clay anywhere else on my farm and these are terrace beds and this is the only place that I've got the red dirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my garden fork like a broad fork and basically all I'm going to do is dig it into the ground like that and wiggle it. I'm not turning it, I'm just loosening the soil and I'm going to do this quickly over this area and then I'll continue on with the next step. What I like to do next, if I have it, is to place another layer of organic matter on top. I do have a little bit of straw left from last season. I've got the cauliflower leaves that I chopped and dropped after I harvested my cauliflower. And I also like to gather my weeds once I weed a really bad bed, put them in a pile and they usually decompose and I've got this beautiful almost composty material that I can spread on top as well. Sometimes I even um, layer um, my weeds straight on top. If they don't have any seed heads, I'll just place them on top, ready for the next layer. But I don't have any extra organic matter at the moment. It's all been used in other beds. So we're gonna skip straight to the compost um, layer. In winter, I made four cubic meters of hot compost and it was absolutely fantastic. Um, it composted down in about eight weeks um, because we did do it in the cooler months. I turned it once. This composting method, you don't need to turn it, but I needed to speed it up a bit and I wanted to reactivate the pile. So I did turn it um, once and it seemed to get things happening again um, and yeah, sped things up for me so I could get, get it on my beds in the spring. I still got a heap of that compost left, so I'm going to put a nice thick layer on this bed so I can get it ready to plant in some of my summer crops. This compost turned out beautifully. I'm so happy with it. It's full of worms. A few of them have wiggled away, but you can see in there the worms. And you can see a heap of worm eggs. These little yellow things, they are baby worms. <laughs> Now 
So now we've got that beautiful compost on. We don't want any of the microbes to die. I specifically uh, made this compost for the microbes that it would bring to my garden, not just the organic matter, but the microbes. So I need to cover this with a layer of straw. I like to use straw because it has less uh, weed seeds than hay. If you put hay on here, you'd have a sea of green in no time. But with the straw, you would have a couple of, um, you know, whatever it is, wheat, oats, to pull out um, as you go along. So I'm using wheat straw on this. Um, you could use wood chips if you wanted to. I prefer not to use wood chips. Um, they're harder for me to come by and if they get dug in, they can draw down your nitrogen and I have had issues before. Um, it does tend to rectify itself within a couple of years, but I don't have a couple of years, so um, I'm gardening for now. Um, but there's, yeah, many other things that you could use to mulch this. You could use sugarcane straw, um, but like I said, wheat straw is what I can get locally and cheaply. So that is exactly what I'm going to use now. Additional things I would do to this bed is give it a really good water in but tonight and tomorrow it's going to rain quite substantially. We're expecting to get about 20 to 25 mils of rain. So I envision that that should be enough water to wet this down. It's already a little bit wet as well because we're having a wet spring. We're having a La Nina here so the ground's already fairly wet so I'm not too worried about adding any more water to it. If I wasn't going to plant it out straight away I'd grab some of my hessian sacks and I'd lay it on top. This would make sure that the mulch wouldn't blow, blow away and it will retain even more moisture and it will aid it in breaking down even more. This is one of my favorite methods to use. Late winter, when I'm getting an early or a head start on my spring beds. Um, but I'm gonna plant in this today. Um, I'm gonna plant in some zucchinis, a second round of zucchinis. And um, the rain will water them in for me. And um, I think they'll have a nice head start with some of the nicer weather we're getting at the end of the week. Something else you could do, you could add in a layer of blood and bone if you wanted to. I feel like I don't need that, my compost is sufficient. Um, I did put, I believe I did put a little bit of blood and bone in that compost heap. Um, if your soil was very acidic, you could lime it now. Um, my soil is a little bit acidic, but I've got a little bit of lime in my compost heap as well. So um, there should be, enough there. Um, I could do a soil test of course and I might do that later on but right now I've got that beautiful compost and I'm going to plant directly into it so I feel like we should be okay. I had really good results here last year with zucchini um, so I'm not too worried about them not performing here but definitely you can amend your soil and you'll be doing it right here right now. Let's go plant my zucchinis and then we're done. <laughs>
there you have it. That's how I prep my permaculture garden using the no dig method. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time on Living the Dream Permaculture. Goodbye.